is the rider that's got himself to the front straight away and indeed goes round that first corner through what looks to be a bit of a dip coming out of that first bend. Bob well into the command as we go into that pit bend for the first time. sorted out so it's not too difficult to try and pick up one or two of those front numbers hopefully the lap scorers are doing it more accurately than me but Bob Cunningham is being pushed very hard by Pete Barnaby in second place at the moment those are the two important places right at the front of the field Wayne Lilly is the rider up in third he's the rider up in third already that he's now riding in the novice class Bruce Carter back in fifth place like you see number four is a rider that's changed his leathers for this season they'll do that occasionally just to confuse me Andy Pannington, the rider in fourth place, putting Wayne Lilly under pressure now as they go down that back straight. Our front one and two have stayed exactly the same, but running your being machine by Pete Barnaby. Third place certainly looks like changing as Andy Pannington comes underneath Wayne Lilly faster. Seeing the last lap play, you'll go in that top corner in third spot. Wayne Lilly still in fourth, Bruce Richards still in fifth. Has it changed at the front? That does look to me like Pete Barnaby has got through to the front now as Bob Cunningham drops back in the second place. As we see the second player come out, it's going to be number one, 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 three, three. Pete Barnaby is taking it from Bob Cunningham. Andy Pannington hangs on to that third place. Wayne Lilly in fourth, Bruce Richards in fifth. And Mike Vernon finishing sixth place. number 37, Colin Crook. We saw him last year competing very, very hard in the expert classes. This year he's dropped back down to novice status. 
and he's going very well in heat two. Rob Snow's up there in second place on the inside of the being pushed very, very hard at the moment. They come out on that mid for the first time. As they being pushed hard, Rob Snow, it is indeed. Phil Bowl that's got through into second place. Gordy comfortably got through to second place, but you see it's all starting to close up for that second, third and fourth spot now as those three riders come round all the way together in that big thing. Colin Cook, what is it? He's got to wait for the rest of the field. There's no problem there for him up in the front at the moment. Dave Barnaby holding fourth place. He's got in with that action. I can see that Rob Snow has creeped through there as well. Rob Snow, I should say Rob Vincent is creeping through in the white leathers. Rob Snow on the outside of Rob Vincent now in third and fourth place respectively. He's got a very good line on the back wheel of Phil Bowles as they go into that bottom bend. He looks for the outside line, turns the power on, drives hard out of that bottom bend, and this is where he's got the speed and the momentum to go past, or has he? As we go down that back straight, you can see that Rob Vincent now looks for the inside line. Rob Vincent might go right on the exit. Looks as if he's done enough. Colin Crook, leader from start to finish. Rob Vincent, a very hard fight after missing the start to get through and get second place. And Phil Bell in third. And it was heat two of the 500cc novice solo and a win for number 37, Colin Crook. In second place, number 77, that's Rob Vincent. Third place, number 229, Phil Bell. In fourth place, number 35, Dave Barnaby. Fifth place, number 189. Sixth place, 161. Seventh place, 36. Eighth place, 19. No other finishes to winning time, 138.43. 37, 77, 229, 35, 189, 161, 36, and 19. That time again, 138.43. So, it's one. Passes time so far. We want to see what happens. Three. down that back straight. I've realised that of course it is uh, Graham Gordon that leads up a 16. Number 83 is Glenn Seabright and I think I'll make the excuse and say if you look at those leathers and the machines you wonder why I made the mistake. A lot of you say well no we can easily see that they're different they've got different numbers but I only looked on quickly. Graham ride this from Graham we saw Graham ride a few times in the Sunday Centre last year. He looked very, very promising indeed. He looks to be going just as well as Glenn Seabright puts it down on that bottom corner. So we lose Glenn Seabright in second place. If he knows Jeff Irvin moves up into third. Oh, one more lap to go for Graham Gordon. And it looks to be coming in second place. He's in second place. Number 109 is Kevin Vicknick in third place. Saw him for the first time down at Bridgewater on that good Friday. Now seen him in action in the dry as the checker flag goes for number 263 Graham Gordon as he closes the bottom of the line. Somebody's just second place. Oh, Kevin Vicknick takes third place and Bill Coon finishes his fourth. Three, 
Bromley Solo. Need a good ride from number 263, that's Graham Ball. In second place, number 241, Jeff Irwin. Third place, number 109, Kevin Vicknick. In fourth place, number 79, Bill Coo. Fifth place, number 99. Sixth place, number 126. Seventh place, 271. Eighth place, 83. And a lap adrift. Ninth place, number 330, Robin Wright. The winning time, 133.03. 263, 241, 109, 79. As you watch him go into that first bend, he already has three or four bike lengths, or has he? As he goes wide on the exit of the bend, you can see the riders charging down on him as they go down that back straight. So, Vaclav Werner manages to hang on to the lead, but goes in hard into the lead. He's going to come after him, number 29, Paul Mitchell. Paul pursued very hard by our Channel Island rider, Anthony Bugard, that goes into third place. And Paul has gone very wide on that bottom bend. Bugard follows him and goes wide and allows a rider to come through on the inside of him up into third place. So, that's that further. He's turning in the bounce because it's Mark Seabright. He's moved through in the second place. So, a very slow start for Mark Seabright, but he's moved up in the second place in front of Paul Mitchell at the moment. Third place is, uh, of course, with Paul Mitchell, but fourth place is Chase. And Paul Friend looks to be closing down very quickly on that third spot. Close. As they go into the last bend, if Vakla further makes another mistake from that, he's going to lose it to Mark Seawright. Seawright's been holding this top bend very, very tight. It's going to be close to the line that Werner just hangs on to it. Oh, the brilliant ride from Vakla Werner, pushed all the way home by Mark Seawright. Paul Friend did win that battle for third place and got up himself into second place. Now, Mark Seawright has gone into third place. Paul Friend 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 has gone into third place
for Tony Cook. He knows that Mel Goodwin's on the edge of his side car and he now moves in front of him. As they come round this pit bend for the third time, they'll be going into their last lap as they come past us. But Mel and Mr. Goodwin have now looked to be in command in front of Tony Cook and Craig Herbert. Oh, I said it was getting tight for third place. Alan and Lynn Peck that are putting the pressure on Jerry Squirrel and Derek Page. And that's going to be a close run to the line. As you can see, those two outfits now almost together as they go down that back straight. And Alan Peck has done an up front of the pit. But one moment to do is take over and take the first five hundred cc cycle race. Tony Cook takes second, and it is Alan Peck that gets through into third. Number 13, that's Mel and Leslie Goodwin. In second place, number 10, Tony Cook and Craig Herbert. Third place, number 20, Alan and Lee Peck. Fourth place, number 34, Jerry Squirrel and Derek Page. Fifth place, number 21, that's Norman Haynes and Neil Nell. In sixth place, number 57, and seventh place, number 11. The winning time, 132.45, 30, 10, 20, 34, 21, 57, and 11. The winning time, 132.45. the first of the 250 races looking for Bill Sims and Dave Fleeken going to the front Bill Sims the tall figure on the inside with the white crash helmet being pursued on the outside by rider number 40 that's Dave Fleeken as he now does he get into the lead watch them come around that pit bend as they're almost together well I think we're all struggling with finding out who that is in third place I'm just hoping that the number of whoever is in third was got by our lap scorers, but uh, I'll leave that to them. I'm not going to try and guess. Um, well, we're making an assumption that that is uh, number 180, Richard Sims, in that third place. Try and confirm that as they come round next time. Uh, a good ride this from uh, a very competent 250 ride. Richards now has got himself up into fourth place and there's problems for Bill Sims and he puts his hand in the air going into that top bend. He pulls out and it allows Richard Sims to go through into second place. Keith Richards with a bit of a fight on his hand in third at the moment. But he's in second place and he comes fast up. He's number four. It was Richard Sims that got that second place. I think somebody else come through and stole that third place. Seven in your program on the event two, two fifty cc solo open. A little bit difficulty there for our lap scorers, but I think we've got a hundred percent right. Right, as if there is any way you can make your numbers more visible, we know you're a long way away from us today, but you have to assess pretty much even work. If we get the numbers wrong, you know the is going to suffer. Race seven then, let's get the result. Is race four. race seven in your program, of course, a week for number fourteen, Dave Lee, that was fair enough. Second place, number one eight oh, Richard Sims. Third place, number 17, that's Richard Wherry. Fourth place, number 143, Keith Richards. Fifth place, number 95. Sixth place, 137. Seventh place, 155. Eighth place, 111. 
like Mark Seabright that it was that went after Nick Irwin and those two together as Nick Irwin goes very very wide Mark Seabright goes through on the inside so Nick Irwin will be annoyed about that going very very wide on the edge of that first bend up in the third place is now pushing Nick Irwin as well. So Glenn Sandon and Nick Irwin has gone wide and dropped it on that top end this time. He allowed Mark Seamite to come through in that position on his last lap. Good to see he's up on his feet. Glenn Sandon holds second place now. As Roy Sizemore goes through into third. John Shane's up in the fourth but really the gaps have opened up. And now we've got an interesting little battle. See if uh, Nick Irwin can do enough to recover and get himself into a good finish. Disappointed to see Mark Zimmer so far back down the field on number 33. But there's no question about who's going to take this one. If we see the checker flag being made ready, it is Mark Seabright on a different machine. In second place, number 811, that's Glenn Stanton. Third place, number 231, Roy Sizemore. Fourth place, number 193, that's John Shane. Fifth place, number 261. Sixth place, number 33. Seventh, number 4. Eighth, 109. Ninth, 332. Tenth, 260. Eleventh, 333. The winning time, 130.31. 
Well, no penny hook, uh, not being able to sort those gearbox problems out. They've unfortunately had to pull out of the meeting. But as we watch them come round off that first bend, it is outfit number 93. And I make outfit number 93, our additional rider, the chance of the race of outfit number 73, who of course went through. This is Andy Simmons and Ken Hancock. Uh, you may remember that notice I gave you out earlier on. You won't see them in the list of riders in the particular race, but they take the face off 73. And novices all the way up from Cornwall going very well at the moment. Outfit number 28 is Darren Brandon and Matthew Dix. They're on that uh, Yamaha-powered machine. They seem to have got away from uh, the other two competitors in this race. But no question about who's uh, in command of this particular race. They look a very competent crew indeed. Trying to close on Darren Bartholomew in that second place. It looks like quite a battle of those three sidecar outfits together as they go around that fifth bend. Ignoring the fact that uh, Andy Simmons has got so far away from them. Trying to work out why I couldn't see a 22. I've realised that, of course, was 27. No, Harry Darvell. Not my apologies there, but the result in a few moments. In a very convincing win for outfit number 93. They are also replacements for 73. Yes, Andy Simmons and Ken Hancock. In second place, number 28, there's Darren Bartholomew and Alex Dix. Third place, number 27, Darren Gravel and Darren Koninsky. In fourth place, number 12, 8, Ward Finley and John Baker. The winning time, 123.05 time. made the best of that first bend that looks like Neil Page has got himself up in the second spot but as I pick them out coming round off that first bend it is indeed number 98 in your programme Joe Mogg has got to the front so Joe Mogg after uh, problems getting here Joe Mogg and uh, Chris Burge leading from Neil and Mark Page Oh, my apologies, Neil Page and Richard Hodge this season, so no Mark Page this year. But in third place, uh, Rick Colvin and Nicola Colvin trying to close that gap with... Uh, ...in fourth spot, I was expecting to see these going a little bit faster. That's uh, Stephen Heath and Steve Wright. Well, the battle certainly seems to be getting close at the front. As you can see, Neil Page has now got himself in the front. Joe Mock tries to drive hard underneath him and gets back to the front. A uh, terrific battle between these two, as you can see. Neil Page got to the front for a few moments, but Joe Mock tried it brilliantly to dive back underneath him. As they come round off that bottom bend, one of our tail enders is going to be in their way, but of course, the checker flag goes for Joe Mock. As Neil Page crosses the line in second place. Um, I don't think they've realised they've finished. <laughs> well, I'm afraid Joe Mogg and uh, Neil Fay do an extra lap just for the sake of it, because uh, although it hasn't changed their positions at all, and we'll give you the results on that. Uh, 
Four laps. And it's heat two and a win. Very good win indeed for number 98. And of course, it's Joe Mogg and passenger Chris Burge. In second place, number 31, Neil Page and Richard Hodge. Third place, number 112, Rick Colvin and Nicola Colvin. Fourth place, number 59, Ralph Matthews and Lawrence Matthews. And I think that's the first race they've completed. New start is number 116, Aubrey Steele and Sue Shivers. The winning time, 123.18. Problems for John Hiscock as he tries to straighten the outfit out. So, uh, missed the start completely. We've got to see if John Hiscock can work his way through the field as Adrian Davis takes it up coming past us for the first time. Royal Logan goes after him in second. He ties up into third. Watch the back as well as the front because John Hiscock has got a lot of work to do to catch up on this fast moving field as Adrian Davis leads going into that top bend for the second time. But under pressure from Roy McGuigan on the inside of him, Adrian Davis and Vince Davis on the outside. Roy McGuigan puts it sideways, trying to stop the machine from pushing in and dive underneath on the exit of the bend. He's quick going down that back straight, Roy McGuigan. Alan Berry working hard on the back of that outfit of Roy and we're going to try and give him the drive he needs and Adrian Davis has gone wide. He allows Roy and we're going to come through on the inside of him. Pete Dyer following him through as well. He'll go after Adrian Davis now. As we watch the down here, Oh, Royal Wigan looks to have got clear now as he moves away from Adrian Davis. Pete Dyer is now putting Adrian Davis under pressure for that second place. But no catching Royal Wigan and Alan Berry. A very hard four race and a good win for them to open their campaign this afternoon. Well, Adrian Davis and Vince Davis managed to hang on to that second place but pushed all the way by Pete Dyer. To see the expert sidecars in action and a very good win for number 127 and that of course is Roy McGuigan and Alan Berry. Great to see those two back in partnership again. In second place number 26 that of course is Adrian Davis and Vince Davis. Third place number 58 Pete Dyer and Tony Bannister. In fourth place number 16 Richard Thomas and John Richards. In fifth place number 184 John Hiscock and Dave French. The winning time 122. Just on the inside of him. I wouldn't be 
for this year going to that first bend leading from Mick Cave in second place. Mick Cave a very good first corner, holds it very very tight but Bill Pittman gets away from the McCabe had made a mistake in fact, my apologies, I thought that we'd had a change in the lead but it was Mick Cave that went wide and allowed uh, Roy and Ken Spridbury to come through in the second place. These three outfits almost together as they come past us. Well, Phil Pittman's going wide this time and Roy and Ken Spridbury going underneath some big change. You can see Phil Pittman going hard on the middle of that bend. And as you can see, we've got a red flag out because uh, as Roy and Ken Spridbury come round in front of me, you see they've taken the lead by going through on the inside but unfortunately Mick Cave in trouble there on that bit bend. So in the interest of safety, obviously the part of the course is done is the red flag. campaigner Pete Barnaby but Kevin Vicknick going down that back straight overtaking one of our tail enders one more lap to negotiate or I should say one more corner to negotiate
To me, you made the best of the start. So we go into that first bend. We watch to see them break as they come round. It was a very, very quick race before it was not. Terry Phillips, it was. It made a good start this time. But Phil Pippen's got to go away from Roy and Kent's Beverly as they dive into that bottom corner for the last time and look over their shoulder they know that Roy and Kent are there but they take the checker flag Phil Pittman and Gary Lane Roy and Kent's Beverly take the checker flag and of course helping number 79 is Arthur Divan and his passenger this afternoon Bob Frost first two laps but it does look as if when he looked down his machine as he came past us last time he's got some sort of problem with his Mitchell is now in third spot. He was leading comfortably at the start of this race, you remember. Roy Sizemore has now got himself to the front and looks to be Roy's on the ribbon to go into that pit bend. You think Paul Prince is looking very, very hard indeed. 
in third spot and Paul Mitchell I'm sure with some sort of problem on that machine finishes in fourth place Looking tremendous for him this afternoon. One more corner
question of whether Tony Cook can hang on. He has again made such a brilliant start. You can see as he goes down that back straight, that one Lester Goodwin had a much harder fight this time. They've had to get through a lot more riders to get under contention of leaving.
only three riders each, so there'll be one or two riders missing from this one that you saw our first time, and that was back in race eight. Second place, number 231. But no answer to Mark C. Wright. He, of course, won his first ride, so this is the second. Second place, number 231. Mark C. Wright, he, of course, won his first ride, so this is the second. Second place, number 231. Mark C. Wright, he, of course, won his first ride, so this is the second.
Hancock, Neil Fanning, Richard Hines, 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 Richard Hines,
had a win first time out. Well, it looks as if Roy Wigan has missed the gate completely. He's last going into that first corner. So this certainly could be an interesting one. Phil Pippen has not really come to yet either in his job. Or he's Problems for Terry Phillips by the look of it on that far side. So Roy Wigan now moves up in two third place but he's had to go something to catch those front two because Phil Pittman and Gary Lane look to be getting away from Richard Thomas. Not much of it out there as Richard Thomas drives hard down that back straight. Roy Wigan and Gary Lane there not being able to close that gap. Terry Phillips has got his machinery going and looks to be flying there out there by himself. What is now fourth place, and perhaps he sees a chance of catching Royal Wigan. But as a go to last lap, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane are coming really going for a maximum in this event. And a win first time out, so this one will keep them on a the maximum as they come to the checkered flag. Comfortably around that top bend as he accelerates towards the line. Shows a pile of dust to Richard Thomas, but a good result for Richard Thomas in second. Royal Wigan hangs on to third place, and Terry Phillips recovers the end.
Dave Bleakin in action. Jack Walker has been out for two other 250 races. So Jack Walker, possibly uh, the more experienced, the, uh, I couldn't check that, First time these two have met this afternoon, but Dave Beacon, a very, very strong competitor in the 250 field, looks in his usual convincing form this afternoon. up into third place now, so watch and keep your eyes on him because he certainly picked his way through the field before this afternoon. Steve Mander has closed up on Jack Walker. Not falling down the back straight, it'll be the checker flag this time round. Third and Richard Sim finishing in fourth place. Another win for 
Lynn Stanton, number 81. Second place, number 4, Bruce Richards. Third place, number 332. That, of course, is Nick Derwin. And fourth place, number 109, Nick Kevin Victor. In fifth place, number 336, Bill Buckley. Sixth place, number 260, Mark Harris. Seventh place, 137. Eighth place, 333. The winning time, 129.95. 811-4332-109-336-337-333-329.99 As we go over the page, there is no race 27 The race has been admitted from the program So we do see the reference side are coming out We go straight into the novice solo So, let's no more and give you the competitors for the to the front, so a very good start from Wayne Lilly. Kevin Vicknick has moved up in the second place and goes after Wayne Lilly as they come out of that first bend. Well, I thought it was going to be a very quick novice final this afternoon because you've got a tremendous line-up of riders and you can see that Wayne Lilly looks in very determined form. Very strong challenging position, he again goes from the outside of Vignick, it is, it goes all the way around the long way. Pete Barnaby has moved up as well, now that's the Black Leathers on Pete Barnaby in third place, he closes up to the back wheel on Wayne Billy. Can it be Vignick though? Can it be Vignick though? Can it be Fighting amongst them, obviously missed the start. Has now worked his way through in the fourth place and starts to close. And Gordon it is a move through Willie, and indeed he moves through on Pete Barnaby. So he gets himself up into second place. A great line there from Graham Well, he is only a young seven down in Cornwall, and this time he's going through on the inside of Kevin Vicknick. This only the second season of Kevin Vicknick, and you can see that he looks as if he has a race in the hand. He's going for it. What a tremendous ride that from Graham Gordon. I really don't think that he's going to be holding the class of a novice rider for too long.
point now there's a back to Furner as he dives around that first bend, he drives hard going out of the bend. Mark Paul Fudge has moved through on the inside. In the middle of those three riders in second place, making Mark C. right work hard, but he comes through on the inside, he goes through, and Rob Camden follows him as well. They all move in. I'm disappointed to see that David Steen has stopped on the far side. I thought he might be the one that would have an answer to back that further. The checker flag will be ready for them this time as they come round, but you can't take it away from a rider of the capability. But a tremendous ride in the first of our big finals for Wagner Ferner. Mark Seabright. Third place, number 49, Paul Fudge. A good ride from him in fourth place, number 24, and of course it's Rob Camden. Fifth place, number 231, Roy Sizemore. Sixth place, number 147, Paul Friend. Seventh place, number 143, Keith Richards. Eighth place, 23, Mike Trevitt. Ninth place, 261, is Andy Gom. And tenth place, number 327, Kevin Buck. The winning time, 125.45. 
something in this one so far is uh, Mark Seabright, 167. Ben Stanford has had some good rides in the Brick 50. go with the last of the 350 and it is that man Mark Seabright that once again has got away and he goes down that back straight holding third place at the moment but pushing hard on Vince Stanton in second Roy Size will come through on the inside Drive hard coming out of that bottom bend. Oh, Mark Seabright still leading strongly. by Nick Irwin. Check a flag will be red for them this time. It's race 31 in your program. This is the last of the three minutes. Very confident he ridden by Marcy Wright. Oh, a gaggle of riders crossed the line for that third and fourth place. Looked to me like Roy Sizemore hung on to it behind this man in second. But we wait to see the result. Reads as yet another win for number 167, Mark Seabright. In second place, 811, Vince Stanton. Third place, number 231, Roy Sizemore. Fourth place, number 332, Nick Irwin. Fifth place, number 261. Sixth place, number 260. Seventh place, 193. Eighth place, 336. Ninth place, 333. The winning time, 128.85. 167.811. 231.332. 261 260 193 336 333 the winning time 128.85 oh, as we see the novice sidecars come out preparing for race 32 well, I said that's a good point towards yesterday this afternoon I said that the 250 event was three scoring rides from four races and I've already been given the result the result of the 250 competition, if you want to put this somewhere in your program, or if you want to make a note of it, won the event this afternoon, I can tell you that my guesswork was correct. Three wins, Dave Bleakin has indeed won the 250 competition. Sorts of problems at the start of race 32. Here are Mark Lane's uh, look to look at those they've now got themselves sorted out. And three competitors got themselves racing. Just one more lap to uh, complete for Neil Page and uh, passenger Richard Hodge as they come round to see the checker play this time. Of course, race 32, and you never know, I might get left lap score this one myself. Neil Page and Richard Hodge win number 128, that's Ward Finley and the passenger John Baker. Coming round the third after that big lap after the start. Number 28, that's Darren Bartholomew and Matthew Dick. Yes. 
themselves ready for race 33. Let's run through the complete result of the 250cc event. It was, of course, a win for number 14, Dave Lincoln. Finishing in second place overall was number 262, Jack Walker. Finishing in third, number 17, Richard Wary. Finishing in fourth, number 180, Richard Sims. Fifth place goes to number 143, Keith Richards. And sixth place, number 95, Steve Mander. So, if you can hear me over in the pits, the result of the 250 overall. First, number 40, Dave Beacon. Second, 262, Jack Walker. Third, 17, Richard Wary. Fourth, 180, Richard Sims. Fifth, 143, Keith Richards. And sixth, number 95, Steve Mander. He's had a good afternoon already this afternoon, but he's coming round to complete that as he takes the checker flag. It is number 98, Joe Mock and Chris Berg just completing that race victory in front of Andy Simmons and Ken Hancock. Uh, good ride from Joe Mock, but of course we will see all the novice side cars in action later in the day when, of course, all this qualifying is over and it's a straight novice final. Race 34, maybe Keith Frederick wants to 
always says to move. If you go down that bank straight, in excellent form at the moment. Ahead of Richard Thomas in second place, Arthur Dibbons ridden well to get up into third. But as we see that chequered flag go out for Royce Redbury and Steve Kensington, a brilliant ride from them. In second place, number 60, Richard Thomas. Well, he's certainly been putting in some good lines this afternoon, Richard Thomas. But third, as they cross the line, number 79, Arthur Dibbon. Great ride that from Royce Redbury. I'll say perhaps Ken wasn't in the mood, but uh, certainly Roy is this afternoon. A win for going on for that third place. That's where all the action is at the moment between those two outfits. Terry Phillips has got away from them in second, but Adrian Davis and Pete Dyer are really having a scrap every inch around this circuit. Adrian Davis is not the best around that big And we won't take our attention off the leader, of course, Rory Mavuga and Berry, but Pete Dyer really has got his work cut out to try and get around Adrian Davis now as they come to the line. Roy Wigan and Alan Berry take it from it. Terry Phillips in second place. And it is Adrian Davis that hangs on the third. And another win for number 127. Roy Wigan and Alan Berry. Second place, number 52. That's Terry Phillips and Chris Myers. In third place, number 26, Adrian Davis, Vince Davis. Fourth place, number 58, Pete Dyer and Tony Bemister. And fifth place, number 19, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. The winning time, 118.81, 127, 52, 26, 58 and 19, 118.81. Well, before we go into event five, the left-hand side cars, I've also been given the result of the 350cc open. So if you want to put these results into the back of the program somewhere where you have been doing the scoring. The winner of the 350 event, and I don't think there'll be too many surprises around the circuit when I say the winner of course was number 167, Mark Seabright. Finishing in second place, though, and very close to him, was 811, that's Glenn Stanton. In third place, and he's ridden very, very well this afternoon. He's in there in a lot of races. Number 231, Roy Size 4. Very well deserved third place. Fourth place, number 261, that's Andy Gorm. Fifth place, number 4, that of course is Bruce Richards. And sixth place, number 193, John Shays. So that was the 350cc open. 
Winner, Mark C. Ryan in second, 811 Glenn Stanton. In third, Big Creek 1, Boy Size 4, 4, 261 Andy John. Fifth, number 4, Bruce Richards. Sixth, 193 John Shane. And I do vote if you were keeping your own points, you can vote for that result. And the next is result for Mark C. Ryan in the big city. As we go through race 36, this of course is heat three and the final heat of the final heat. Nice car event. And I was going to say that it must be very, very close at the top of the points between number 10, Tony Cook, and number 30, Mel Goodwin. But of course I can't see Mel Goodwin out there. have been scoring very, very well this afternoon. They lead at the moment from another crew that's been scoring well, number 10, Tony Cook and Craig Herbert. So this really is going to be interesting to see what happens to the toys because I know it was Mel and Lester Goodwin that was stopping Tony Cook from scoring maximum points. Red White Program, right, wouldn't it? <laughs> I was just told he wasn't even, Mel wasn't due out in this one, so of course the points will get interesting because it means now that we've got Alan and Lynn Peck, who've uh, now probably completed their three rides, have scored well. We know that Tony Cook has scored well, and we know that Mel and Lester Goodwin have scored well. So a very, very tight competition, and indeed a good ride there from Alan and Lynn Peck. 36, heat 3 of the left-hand side, Tyler Wynn for Nelson, number 20, Alan and Lynn Peck in 2nd place, number 10, Tony Cook and Craig Herbert. 3rd place, number 19, Wayne Boyd, Simon King. In 4th place, number 34, Jerry Squirrel and Derek Page. In 5th place, number 57, Mike Reed and Andy Robinson. 6th place, number 11, and 7th place, number 78. The winning time, 131.93, 20, 10, 91, 34, 50, 
open final. Paul Fudge still there in second, Anthony Bougard still there in third. Keith Richards is up in fourth. That looks like Graham Gordon, our winner of the novice final. It's up in fifth. Anthony Bougard in third, Keith Richards in fourth. And it is Graham Gordon that finishes in fifth place. Well, I've already been given the qualifiers for the sidecar finals, so the qualifiers for the novice sidecar is event 6, race 43. I'll give these to you by number. They are 28, 31, 98, 127. My apologies if you missed any of those as the bikes went by, but I will obviously repeat those before we get to those actual finals. But we're already underway with race 38. Wayne Lilly, up in fourth, having a good day today, Wayne Lilly. That poor friend pulls the front wheel in the air as he goes down the back straight. Leads from Kevin Buck in second. Let's see Mike in Kevin Muck comes through for second. Great finish from Glenn C right there in third place, number 83. It's Wayne Lilly that comes through for fourth. I think I need to remind you there's only three that qualify from these open races. There's three that have very clearly got themselves away from the rest of the field. Mark C. Right, leads the group of three. They come last time for the second time. Mike Trevitt's up there in second. Paul Smith in third place. And there is a big, big gap back to number 35, Dave Barnaby. So three only to qualify, those three have got themselves away from the rest of the field and Mark Seabike looking very, very comfortable to qualify. One more lap to go from him. Very, very cautiously as he goes around that last lap. Mike Trevitt, comfortably down in second. A big, big gap back to number 11, Steve Warner. He's got the best of that battle for that fourth place. But as we see the checkered flag come out, we get three more riders to go through. The other two qualifiers are 23 and 70. Of race 39 was number 167, and of course is Mark Seabright. In second place, number 23, Mike Trevitt. 
Third place, number 17, Paul Smith. The winning time, 131.76. 167, 23 and 70. 131.76. like Justin Elkins has got a much much better start than he's had earlier on in the day he leads comfortably going down that back straight I'm sure he realised that it's one two and three oh, oh, Mark Chesnell also had disappointment earlier on this afternoon but he's holding third at the moment that's a very important place to hold Rob Camden now closing up on uh, Justin Elkins in the lead. You can see that gap has closed in the middle of the Camden. As the race goes on, he's there in second place. Mark Chesel still there in third. Andy Paddington has got the job of closing on that third place. He looks fairly comfortable in fourth, but he's got to make third if he's going to qualify for the final. Right, Justin Elkins looks as if Justin found another inch of power and all the way again. Bob Camden throws it into that pit bend, recovers well, but he looks to have slowed as he goes wide past me. I don't know whether that was a chain or something, he lost in that bend, but he really did throw the bike sideways. As if something could happen, so has Andy Pannington now got himself through into that quad bike lane. We'd love to see them come over the line, and the second bag will go for Justin Elkins this time as he comes round. Mark Chesel, of course, is elevated up in the second place, and it does mean that Andy Pannington gets through. So he's done enough in that third spot, due, of course, to the mechanical problem of Bob Camden. Number 191, that is Justin Elkins, and that's the short place in the final. In second place, number 758, Mark Chesel. In third place, number 16, Andy Paddington. The winning time, 129.67. So we can transfer those three numbers over to that final. 191, 758, and 16. One more qualifying ride to go, that is race 41, in five. That is a big national lineup with all the top runners in the country going on that day. But a plea of help this afternoon. I know normally you've got lots of volunteers to help, but all they're going to do is drop the ropes tonight. So uh, no need for a bit of space at all. And when you're leaving the field, if you could leave by the exit on the far side, not the way you came in, go down to the field opposite us, and then you'll be directed out onto the road by. So we're back with the race 41, it is course heat 5. Oh, Pete Barnaby unfortunately with problems there pulling off into the centre of the circuit, number 133. From Mark Harris, John Shanes is up there in third place. Well, oh, Mark Webster is the rider that's got all the work to do in fourth at the moment. Matt Benson had a very, very good ride in the 350 competition, you'll remember. The open race. Mark Harris casually looks over his shoulder. I think you'll see Mark taking it very cautiously 
for the last lap and a half. He knows second place is a comfortable qualifying position for the final. John James holding that very important third place. Oh, Mike Webster still there in fourth, looking in front of him to see that. He's qualified for the final. Mark Harris gets second. John James gets third. That's the important third place. Open qualifying races. This concludes the qualification for event eight final. And indeed, the win for number eight one one, Glenn Stanton. In second place, number two six zero, Mark Harris. Third place, number one nine three, John Shanes. The winning time one thirty one point four five. So the last three qualifiers for that final: eight one one, two six zero, and one nine three. One thirty one point four five. The time. And while I've got a very quick minute, I would say to riders, there are regs available for the Swindon meetings, June the 6th, July the 4th and August the 15th. Regs are with Robinson, number 77, in the pits. Also, there are regs here for the Bristol Grass Track Racing Combine on a meeting on May the 23rd. Somebody has uh, dropped an envelope full of regs here, so riders, if you want to ride on May the 23rd at the Bristol Grass Racing Combine, then there are regs here in the caravan.
underway and going into that first bend. Well, I'm not going to try and preempt anything at all, but I think Mel and Lester Goodwin know exactly what they've got to do to win the 500cc competition overall. They've gone straight to the front of the pack, and I think they're going to take some catching. We watch them come around off that bit bend. go all over the continent representing the UK in the 500cc class and as they've told me many times before there are some very very quick Germans in this type of racing they really do take some catching they may look comfortable at that this afternoon so it's a lot different when you get to the Germans. no problems at the moment as they look over their shoulder Mike Reed is the man in second place who's gone after them that gap has certainly opened up between first and second, but three outfits together for second, third and fourth place. So that's going to take some sorting out. I can tell you that... Uh Robertson in second, just holding off the challenges from third and fourth place riders at the moment. Boys move through, Jerry Squirrel is in there in the third place. The second plan goes to Mel and Lester Goodwin and I can confirm to you that is enough for them to win this afternoon's event in the 500cc sidecar. A good ride from them, a very convincing performance. A good scrap there to get that second and third place, but in terms of the overall competition, Wayne, Mel and Lester Goodwin did exactly what was necessary. The final of event seven, and of course in that big final of event eight. So, three races, three big finals to come, and a quick reminder to you that leaving the circuit will not be the way you came in. It's the gap in the hedge over the far side there, what I can say is the... How will I describe that? Where that line of cars is on the far side, just about 20 yards to the right as we're looking at them, that's where the gap is in the hedge. If you go down through that gap, you'll see that you go across the field and then out on the road in that direction. So, nice and simple, I know, I can understand that. So, uh, we look to the finals of the 1000cc sidecars. Coming to the line should be number 28, Jaron Bartholomew and Matthew Dix. Number 31, Neil Page and Richard Hodge. Number 98, Joe Mogg and Chris Berg. Number 112, Rick and Nicola Colby. Number 128, Ward Finley, we hope, because he was in search of a passenger. John Baker, of course, getting injured. Number 93, Andy Simmons and uh, Ken Hancock. Well, I reckon that's Jane McLaren who's jumped on the back of Ward Finley. So I've just looked across there, stretching my binoculars, trying desperately to get them in focus, but it does look as if Ward Finley is on the line, and those leathers look very distinctively like Jane McLaren's to me. So, we watch to see them go down that back straight. I'm sure a lot of you will pick it up as they come round, but as we go into that first bend, the rider has been going well all afternoon. This afternoon is number 98. The red flag has indeed gone up. We've lost, by the look of it, a sidecar passenger on that bottom end. The red flag is in the air, so the rest of the ride is slowing down in the interest of safety. Tremendous start in that uh, first run before the race was stopped. Blown off the inside again, he's got himself up to the front exactly where he was before the race indeed was stopped. But this time there's another outfit very, very close to him. He looks to go wide, you can see the outfit underneath him is Neil Page who's come through on the inside of him. But, Joe Mock goes to the front again, Neil Page goes after him. Look to see if they start to get them sorted out, but Joe Mock and Chris Berg going well at the front of Neil Page and Richard Hogg. Well, those two outfits together as they come round off that first bend. Looking to see what it's in turn. It is the youngsters from Cornwall, number 93. Andy Simmons and Ken Hancock. So Rick Colvin and Nick Colvin dropped back to fourth place and look to be under pressure to hold that. 
As we look to the front, let's not take it away from Jay Mogg. He's rode brilliantly all afternoon. I did mention it earlier in the day that they had a disaster coming here. He's in desperate need of some tyres. They had electrical fault in the van, the van caught fire and uh, they had to stop on the side of the road and quickly unload the outfit because yes, the outfit did have methanol in it, they were lucky to save the outfit, they were lucky to save their equipment and everything but they did lose four racing tyres. Tyres are not cheap as you know if you change them on your car. If anybody can help Joe, I'm sure he'd be very pleased to have got that prize money this afternoon. A great win for Joe Mogg and Chris Berg in second place to them. A good fight from Neil Payne and Richard Hogg. Third place going to number 93, Andy Simmons and Ken Hancock. This is our car event, six event, and then we need a win for number 98, Joe Mogg and Chris Berg. In second, number 31, Neil Page and Richard Hogg. In third place, number 93, Andy Simmons and Ken Hancock. Fourth place, number 112, Richard and Nicola Colvin. And in fifth place, number 28, Darren Bartholomew and Matthew Dix. The winning time, 121.56. 121.56 time, 98, 31, 93, 112 and 28. the start of the event 7000 cc sidecar event i would quickly make an apology on behalf of our point scorers do apologize for the 500 cc sidecar result that we gave out and i know this will affect the pits more than anybody else there was a slight error in the results that's been looked at again it's been corrected and the result now is that in fourth place in the 500 cc sidecar results is number 91 wayne boys and swapping places with 6th place, number 34, Jerry Squirrel, on the freight, drops down from 4th to 6th. Our apologies for that, and on behalf of the lap score, is obviously uh, apologies. But we'll stay with the expert sidecar final now as they get underway down that back straight. That looks to me to be Adrian Davis has made a brilliant start going into that first bend. He really has been quick off that start line this afternoon, but as the rest of the outfits get close to him, coming through on the inside of him is Royce Bradbury and Steve Kensington. Royce Bradbury and Steve Kensington come through on the inside of him. He's now going to take some catching as he moves down that back straight and into the top bend for the second time. Well, Adrian Davis has had a good day so far this afternoon. He's made some brilliant starts and this is going to be good if he can hang on to this second place. Bill Pittman and Gary Lane are slow off the start. They now got themselves up in the third place. Not letting Royce Bradbury get away from him at all as they go down that back straight. He's still close to him. He gets very, very close going into that top end. Tries to go round the outside the long, long way round. Steve Kenshin anxiously looking over his shoulder. And you see Phil Pittman is starting to close on Adrian. He's got his own problems to worry about because Rory McWigan is getting close to him as well. And will Rory McGregor have a go at Phil Pittman in this top bend? They've been very quick around that top bend this afternoon. But as the chequered flag goes up, there's no taking it away from Royce Redbury and Steve Kenyon. They take the chequered flag. Adrian Davis finishes in that second place. A good ride from him and Phil Pittman and Gary Lane hold on the third in front of Roy McGregor and Alan Berry. Rather quickly past us, the official result of race 44. A win for outfit number 43, that is, of course, Roy Spreadbury. A change of passenger halfway through the day, Steve Ketchington. In second place, number 26, Adrian Andovitz Davis. In third place, number 19, Bill Pittman and uh, passenger Gary Lane. Fourth place, number 127, Roy McGuigan and Alan Berry. Fifth place, number 58, Pete Dyer and Tony Bemister. And sixth place, Alvin, number 16, Richard Thomas and John Richards. The winning time, 117.16, 117.16. Of 
of today, the big open final four solos. Event 8 is your program. If you haven't been transferring the numbers over, I'll quickly run through them all for you. It's 214, 49, 2, 147, 327, 83, 167, 23, 70, 191, 758, 16, 811, 260, and 193. Tremendous lineup for this open final. Remind you, of course, I'm sure most of you have already got it in your mind. Matt Clamferno won the expert final. Number 167, Mark Seabright won the overall 350. But think about the heat winners that we had qualifying for this final. Werner, of course. Seabright, of course. Well, we also had uh, Justin Elkins in much better form in event eight than he's been early on this afternoon. Glenn Stanton. He's had a good result this afternoon, some very good rides. He was a heat winner to qualify for the final. A very interesting final heat prospect. He's tucked in there as well, and we lose Mike Trevitt on that top corner. And Mike Trevitt slid off on the inside as he tried to come through them. It means that we have yet again got a red flag in the interest of safety. Vaclav Ferner immediately slows up and pulls out wide. The rest of the riders do slow down. But unfortunately, Mike Trevitt losing his machine on that bottom corner, and one or two other riders uh, connecting with machinery there. So the car for the course deciding that, in the interest of safety, we'll recall all the riders. Well, a brilliant piece of riding from the very experienced Vakla Ferner. Justin Elkins certainly had got a complete machine length in front of him. And Paul Fudge, but Vakla Ferner worked his way through on the inside. And has now got himself up to the front once again. Mark Seabright is right up there with him now. He's on the inside. And 
and you will notice the different tapings of riding that top bend. Because watch the pit bend. Max Laferna likes to ride a very wide line. He, of course, is a very experienced long track rider. And that's the way to ride long track. Ride the dirt, ride the dust, ride round the outside. But Mark C. Wright, of course, a very experienced speedway rider. He's used to hugging his curve, keeping that back wheel spinning all the time and driving it hard and using the steering. So two very different styles, it's going to be interesting to see who indeed comes out on top as you can see exactly what difference it makes. What the different parts of the circuit, it makes a difference. You see the very tall figure of Mark Speedway comes in tonight, drives it hard, just to get maximum speed down the straight. But that very, very experienced back La Ferna will do everything he possibly can to keep all the doors closed. He goes quickly when he's on those outside circuits. There's one more corner to go, and my apologies to the rest of the field for staying with these two, but it was such an interesting clash of styles and a clash of ability. I knew it was going to be close, and as they come with a checker flag, the experience of Black Love Burner has paid off. A brilliant ride from him. And Mark Seabright, a great ride and a great attempt, but he has to settle for second place. Amazing. Superb ride from Mark Chesel. Disappointing earlier on this afternoon that Mark Chesel had that fall, but he's now come through and got third place in the open final. And Paul Fudge, a good ride from him into fourth. But I think you'll agree, a tremendous ride from Vac Laferna. Well indeed, as both of them come round faster, so I think you'll appreciate what I was trying to say. My apologies to all of you that were supporting other people here this afternoon, but really that was for me a very interesting race indeed, because there were two totally different styles of riders, and what a tremendous final it turned out to be. As they come round, please show them your congratulations. I'll give you the official result though. It's a win for number 214, Crack La Ferna. Finishing in second place is number 167, Mark Seawright. In third place, a good result for a good third place of 758, Mark Chesel. Fourth place, number 49, Paul Friend. No, it's not Paul Friend, of course, it's uh, Paul Fudge. In fifth is Paul Friend, number 147. In sixth, number 191. In seventh, 193. In eighth, 16. Ninth, 260. So the winning time, 124.95. 124.95. 214.14. 167. 758. 49. 147. 191. 193. 16. And 260.